Wonderful. So thank you very much for joining us for this week's Business Bites. This week we're joined by the wonderful Aaron Calvert of Aaron Calvert. Uh, <laughs> delighted to see you here, Aaron. Yeah, it's a really egotistical name. I've never really thought about it as a company name, really. But uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely egotistical, isn't it? Calling my company myself. Well, nobody's going to forget who you are. And that's not the only company you have. You have a second business. Uh, I do indeed. Question Hypnosis. That's correct. Uh, which we're going to hear some more about. So just for the purpose of our viewers and listeners today, Aaron, can you just give us a little bit of background on, well, where it all started for you? Sure. So um, I guess I'd call myself a doctor turned hypnotist is probably the sort of short version of that. Um, essentially, I'm back, God, in the early sort of 2010s, I went to med school and um, I was there training as a doctor. And as I was training as a doctor, I simultaneously got into the field of entertainment hypnosis, but not kind of like the comedy shows that you might imagine. So none of these sort of cringeworthy um, sort of suggestions of making someone dance with a mop and thinking it's Brad Pitt. Uh, much more of an idea of taking people and getting them to do incredible and inexplicable things with hypnosis live on stage. Uh, and that was whilst I was in med school, sort of early two, uh, 2010s. And then from there, decided to leave medicine after I graduated, after I got my job, I decided to leave medicine and instead work full time for myself in the entertainment industry. And then on the side of that, during my time at med school as well, I was doing clinical hypnotherapy and I've continued that into the practice over the last few years as well with prescription hypnosis. So two sides of the business, one that's entertainment focused, but all about the power of the mind and being able to push people to do it incredible things that they wouldn't be able to do without the hypnosis and then the other side which is the clinical side which is designed to help people um, either make a positive change in their life or help uh, businesses create a positive mindset and culture within their industry brilliant and and it is a wide range of skills that you have i'm just going to rewind the clock a little bit aaron so what what made you go to med school what made you get into that field i was watching house at the time it seemed pretty good um no uh, the 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 thing for me was, I think I'd always been passionate about people. Like I'd always been a good communicator. I'd always been uh, really good with and, and friendly. Like I enjoyed communicating with people. Uh, and at the same time, I happened to be really good at science. And um, I mean, I worked my ass off for it, but um, you know, I just had that kind of natural inclination towards it. And you take science, you take people work, and you kind of end up with medicine. Um, at sort of sort of 16, 17, when I was having to sort of make this big career choice. And I know we put a lot of stress on our children because uh, I know I'll probably do the same when mine turn 18. Um, but, uh, you know, my parents definitely turned around and went, look, you need a career option. Like school turned around and went, you need a career option. Performing and magic and mind reading and hypnosis, whatever you want to call it, that's not a career option. Mm -hmm. That's a hobby. Sure. It's not a career option. So, you know, I looked for a career, which medicine's a pretty damn good career. So I, yeah, put myself towards that. And I was really passionate about it. I just wanted to be a doctor. I honestly went to med school, um, just so excited to graduate in five years time and start a job as a doctor. I didn't contemplate anything else. And you uh, had and a job as a doctor, didn't you? Say again? You got that job as a doctor. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But something changed along the way where sort of just at the start of med school, I found kind of performing in its own right, kind of like the stage in a way that I'd never done before. At the sort of age of eight, nine, 10, I performed magic shows, which, which I loved. I love entertainment in terms of magic. Um, but I always found that I was quite disappointed when I was learning magic with the secrets. I, you know, I'd see this amazing thing, this impossible thing where, uh, you know, David Copperfield would make the Statue of Liberty vanish. And then you'd work out how it was done and you're almost a little bit disappointed with it. Uh, and it was the same when I was buying tricks to learn. I saw this amazing thing and I bought it to learn that secret. But the secret was, well, actually, the coin's really still in this hand. And it just wasn't as entertaining. Um, and so I kind of fell out of love with magic when I was about 12, 13. And that was because I was just naive. I, I, what I didn't realize is that secret that you were learning you were giving people the rea same reaction that I had that made me want to learn it in the first place, but it's taken me years to learn that. Um, and then, um, yeah, when I was 15, I found the world of sort of hypnosis or a hypnotist on stage and just was astounded with what could be achieved with kind of just the use of a voice. That's it. He walks out on stage with a voice 
and he'd create this whole amazing imaginary world for these people on stage to have this experience. And I thought there's got to be more than you can do with it than, you know, the comedy sketches that we see on TV and the swinging pocket watches. It's nothing like that in reality. So I set out on this sort of adventure to find out what was going on. And just as I joined med school, it all clicked into place. Like hypnosis suddenly made sense. The, the mind reading aspect came a little bit later, but it was just where my heart was. And I'd not realized up until that point, that point, my heart had been in medicine. And so I started med school really with knowing that magic wasn't a career I could possibly have or performing or hypnosis, whatever you want to call it. That wasn't an option. So med school was, and I was still excited about it. But then I started to do both in tandem. I started to put together shows and I ended up touring during my during med school. So I toured around the country. I toured during my dissertation. So I was writing dissertations 12 hours a day and then performing three hours a night. You know, it, so it was a pretty mental time. And it got to the point where once I'd started, once I graduated, once I'd looked at kind of where my life was going and I was starting this job, that I had s- several opportunities on the table that were there for the entertainment, yeah. that were there for other aspects. Yeah. And amazingly, they were open to me because I was a doctor, you know, Channel 4 was looking to do the show and they wanted someone who was a hypnotist. But hypnosis in the public eye is just a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, It's misunderstood. Yes. Um, And so being a doctor and having it from the clinical side and the entertainment side really obviously helped build that bridge, really. Yeah, you had the credibility behind you because of that medical profession. So you've, you've not just gone into it from an entertainment perspective, actually, you know the science behind it, and you've not just used that to make people laugh, you've used that to make people better. Um, Absolutely. You're getting the best of both worlds, you're getting to live that dream of being able to perform um, and put people in awe, but also to make them better individuals by doing it ethically through your medical training. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, it, you know, the, the, the approach to hypnosis is very similar in both settings. It's just a very different setting between entertainment and sort of the hypnotherapy. But I think both have that overall impact. Yes, the stage is very showman. And, it, you know, don't get me wrong. Love a stand innovation. Don't get me wrong. That is genuinely the egotistical yeah, yeah. kind of performer side coming I out. I make my family do on every tea time when I come <laughs> through the door. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt that, to be fair, Lisa. <laughs> But, you know, but in a way, you're providing these escapes from reality for people who may be, you know, not happy in their job or they may not be happy in life or whatever that is, or they may just be stressed. And you're providing this getaway in the entertainment world and these gas worthy moments where they can just forget everything outside for an hour, two hours and experience this incredible moment. And then with the therapy side, you know, people are coming to make positive changes in their life. And and so, you know, they do say laughter is the best medicine. and Definitely the stage stuff helps on that front as well. And you've done some brilliant stuff in the past. We know you've done the programs with Channel 4, um, separating the couples and then putting them back together again. Um, Yeah, I certainly name dropped that earlier, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You've also done the uh, hypnotised a plane full of passengers for Thomas Cook. I did. Um, What was that experience like? That, that was brilliant. Uh, obviously gutted that Thomas Cook no longer exists. Uh, I think, you know, I, I, and it's just one of those sad facts, you know, we see companies go under and especially this time during sort of the COVID pandemic, we're, we're seeing lots of that and lots of stress associated with that. So, you know, it wasn't my campaign that put them under. I'll, no, I'll just put I'll out there. Clear. <laughs> definitely make that clear. Um, but you've also, you performed for our Lancashire Day last year, which I did. was just incredible. And I guess, I think the, the only issue you might have in your profession is uh, people are always sceptical, aren't they? Um, mm. You know, I, I mean, I hired you, brought you in, and you, you were our, yeah. our, our key speaker and uh, entertainer for the day. And, um, you know, you picked my other half up. So I, I knew that he'd had no pre-connections with you or anything like that. And the fact that you just took away his ability to spell was fantastic the uh i think i mentioned to you the other day the breakfast in bed has worn off so if you can resubmit <laughs> that part that would be brilliant um but we'll, no i mean we'll that was... out off camera lisa we'll be all right <laughs> brilliant um we got a lot of great feedback that day and the beautiful thing was you did it with a corporate twist yeah. um you know you entertained our, our guests in such a way that they could be better in business um and with much more um access to everything around them like you said that that feeling of being positive is just wonderful and people will get that in different ways a lot of people save up for a long time to go on holiday to have that reprieve and that's something that you can give well much earlier and, and right here and locally 
Yeah, I, I think you know the, there's there's two there's two aspects to that. Obviously, uh, you know, I genuinely enjoyed Lancashire Day. It was so so wonderful. So many businesses coming together. And I know this is obviously sort of GB head, and I'm sure all, many of the other counties are just as lovely. Uh, and you know, I don't originally hail from from Lancashire, uh, from Lancashire but genuinely, um, you know, it, it was such a nice day to to have businesses coming together for no other other sort of purpose other than meeting each other. Yeah. Like that that was what was nice. But, you know, my skills within sort of hypnosis and, and mind reading and all of that, there is a lot there that out and out, I'm a salesman. I am selling my product, which is myself. And there's a lot of stuff that I've learned in terms of being on stage that helped me with that process. You know, like you said, people are always skeptical when I walk onto stage and it's my job to win them over. That's the same as meeting a brand new client who may have already an existing supplier and you want to win that sale. Yep. Those techniques that I use on stage, granted amplified for 300, 1,000 people at a time, yep. uh, uh, can be scaled down to the point where you're having a conversation. That's obviously the demonstration we did with Tez, where we ended up picking his pocket. Yep. Um, because I was so comfortable with where I was, I literally took his watch off his wrist and his phone out of his pocket. So it um, I, you know, I know there's a video on Lancashire somewhere that you there can is. find that, but uh, it's on the website as well. Um, but you know, that's one aspect. And then the sort of clinical side it, with, I say clinical, clinical is the wrong word. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just holistic care. It's looking after your mental health mm -hmm. and particularly with businesses whilst we're suffering stress. Yep. All of us suffer stress every day of our lives. It doesn't matter whether you feel it or whether you know you're stressed, everything stresses us out. Eating breakfast causes a stress to the body because it's got to process food, that's mental. Yeah. But then there's the obvious things like work and that's 40% of people's biggest stress. That's a massive thing mm -hmm. uh, that we can look to help people de-stress with if, if we have employees. Yeah. Um, but we need to be doing that daily. You know, it's great going on these two week holidays and looking forward to them going, yeah, we're gonna go away. You recharge for two weeks and then two weeks later, you're back to the same place. <laughs> Feels like it's uh, gone, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know, we all say that we get back, you go, oh, God, I've been back three days. It doesn't feel like I've even been away. Okay. Um, you know, we need to be recharging on a daily basis to make sure that we're all functioning at 100%. Like we are as happy as we can possibly be. We're as stress free as we can possibly be 100% of the time. You talk there about the, the standing ovation and, and how you love it. But I guess listening to you keep talking. It's not necessarily the, um, you know, everybody clapping you. That's a thing. You, you talked about your job is to win them over. And I guess Absolutely. that tells you you've done that. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's kind of my, I guess it's a little bit of a reward, but I'll be honest, the, 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 the sort of standing innovation is, is never directed towards me. And I think that's what I kind of preferred towards the mind reading hypnosis as opposed to the magic was yeah. because, you know, a magician traditionally stands on the edge, like front of the stage. He does his big final trick and he gets a round of applause because everyone's looking at how marvel marvelous he is. Whereas with the mind reading show, everything that's happened is because of the audience and what they've done. So really they're, they're actually sharing that appreciation for themselves. So it tells me I've done a good job, which is always nice to hear. Um, but it also is to them as well. The biggest moment in the show isn't to do with me. It is genuinely, I take someone from the audience. I teach them how to read someone else's mind in the audience that they don't know. They've never met before. It's something they think of in that moment. And that gets the biggest moment in the show. It's nothing to do with me. They, they think of, what the word or the object might be. They write it down, the person shouts it out, they turn around the board, fingers crossed it's right, because if it's not, it's awkward, and they reveal it, and they get that moment. It's nothing to do with me. Um, you know, that, that process and methodology can be applied to other businesses. So as you're talking about that, that standing ovation, yes, it's, it's kind of backing up that you've delivered what you intended to and won the room round, but secondly, that those individuals are clapping at each other. And you can kind of apply that to our share sites in a way. You know, when somebody does sign up with us, the way I look at it is great. I got what I wanted, which is the buy-in, not necessarily the money, but the buy-in to the bigger mission. Um, Absolutely. That's where I get my satisfaction. And very similarly, it's when two members come together and they find that synergy and they're kind of clapping each other because they've both got a win, nothing to do with me, just the fact that they're sharing this space. And again, that's the satisfaction. So I can relate to what you're saying with that. Um, just going on to the other side of the business, prescription hypnosis, obviously yeah. this is something you do in a bit more of a uh, medical profession. Um, mm -hmm. And again, very, very good at it, brilliant results. Um, we're going to see probably your services and the need for them to massively increase now because you're right, we already had high levels of stress. 
Um, you know, if you, you kind of look at a, a creature, uh, let, let's just take a deer in a field, for example, you know, yeah. a lion comes after it, it steps up a gear, adrenaline kicks in and it's off. But as humans, we do that quite a lot to ourselves, don't we? Yeah. We stay in that high stress state for longer periods of time and the body's not necessarily geared up to be at that level all the time. So what techniques can people use? Not at all. I think, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. You know, we, you know, the, the stresses of a lion chasing us aren't something that we experience many days of uh, many weeks. I hope anyway, uh, depends if you're Tiger King on Netflix, but um, the, the obvious, the, the, like the thing is w things that we don't expect that aren't obvious to us sometimes trigger that. So going into lockdown would have absolutely triggered that adrenaline response for a lot of people raising that stress and with that raising anxiety as well. And our bodies aren't designed to be in that state. So, uh, and this, this is a pretty shocking statistic, but there was a study done over eight years and it found that if you experience a high level of stress in the last 12 months, you are 43% more likely to die than someone who experiences low levels of stress. Now that is mental, almost half as likely to die. And it's not all doom and gloom because there is some more to that, but they found that those people that experienced a high level of stress but perceived it not to have a negative impact on their body or their life actually were no more likely to die than the people who experienced low levels of stress. So there are those people that function on that high level of stress. And I know Lisa, you're definitely one of them. Uh, I'd count myself, but it's a driving force as opposed to something that uh, weighs you down, that keeps you worried, that keeps you up at night. Um, but you know, and the difference between that is that over time you've trained your body to do that. Now, lots of people aren't open to what they're, uh, feelings of stress are not open to the idea of what may be sort of the effects of stress may be but actually it's having a proper impact on our on, on our bodies and in doing so the longer you're in that chronic state of stress the more damage you're doing to yourself and so there are really simple things you can do uh, to help you de-stress so one of the things is uh, when it comes to the evening, increasing recovery time. So uh, when, you're, when you're coming into the night time and going into sleep, that is the biggest time for you to recover from stress. You're recharging your battery, essentially. So if you're coming into the evening, make sure you're having a nice, relaxed evening. Don't leave those things till late at night stressing. Don't check your emails at 10 o'clock because that's going to stress you out. You don't need to get back to your work emails at 10 o'clock. Leave your phone in your office from 7.30. Leave it, leave it in, your, in your kitchen. Leave it wherever. Get it out of your hair so it's not stressing you out. You know, something as simple as literally doing the plate straight after dinner and not leaving them until you go up to bed at 10.30 <laughs> causes a raise in stress, which means that you're going to not get to sleep as quickly as you would have done to recharge. Um, flipping the work day. So many of us start the work day with the easy tasks, the things that we like, because we want to ease ourselves into the day, which is great. Yep. But then progressively throughout the day, we get more and more stressed doing the stuff that we don't like, the stuff that we're putting off. And by five o'clock, stress is up here. Yep. We're working late. We stay an extra half hour when we shouldn't do. And then we enter the evening already stressed. So flip the work day. Do the yep. stuff that you don't like first thing. So that way you've got the rest of the day. Sorry, I interrupted you there. That's right. right. That way you've got the rest of the day to sort of burn off that stress and, and, and end the day doing the things that you like. Give yourself a boost before you leave and go home and relax for the evening. And it's all great advice because you're absolutely right. You know, sometimes you log on to your emails 10 o'clock at night, you've had something and you think I'll shift this so it's not there in the morning. And by the time you get to morning, they've replied and you've got to get on with the next bit. <laughs> uh, absolutely, so, absolutely. Uh, and I think that's, you know, that is de genuinely the sort of, the problem in a way with, with the sort of instant sort of society that we're living in. We've got our work for emails on our phones. And I know like yourself, obviously we're, we're self-employed. So there is that onus that feels like, oh God, if I don't reply to this now, I'm somehow going to lose that business. But even people that work for, you know, big companies still have, still have that sort of, sort of self press pressure to say that I've got to respond instantly because we're so used to doing that by text, by WhatsApp, by messenger, you know, pick your, pick your messaging service. But we don't have to do that. We should have a time where we clock off. You know, if we're working from home, like many of us are right now, set a time when you turn off, yeah. shut your laptop down, Leave it in its place. Make sure it's somewhere where it's either a room that you're not going to go in for the rest of the night or it's the corner of the room set specifically. Don't do it in your bedroom. Do don't do it in the living room. Those places are places to relax. So make sure you don't do anything there. And yep. then shut it down at five o'clock. That's it. Wash your hands of it. Go and relax. Go and do something you enjoy. I don't think anybody expects you to be working nights unless you're a nightclub or, or something along those lines, I guess. But um, just moving on to, obviously, the current pandemic, Aaron, because there is... Yeah. Um, a lot of businesses that are completely thriving in this, um, but also a lot that are suffering. And it's, it's been tragic to see a few that we know that have, have not survived it. 
Um, because of the nature of what we do, we have been able to help a lot that have been able to access things and, and to keep them going. However, those levels of stress for some people and some businesses is going to be extremely high at the end of this. Um, the Chamber did a survey, I think a third of businesses are probably going to make redundancies. Um, I think there are a certain number of businesses that can probably only survive for three or four months and then they're going to really struggle after that. Um, there's going to be a lot of individuals that are living. I mean, I'm quite fortunate. I have nice garden space, etc. But some people are in apartments and flats and the weather has not been kind of the last couple of weeks. Um, was at the start of lockdown, but quickly changed. Um, I'll, I'll own up to that. I actually built some outdoor furniture about two and a half weeks ago when the weather changed. That is entirely my fault. <laughs> right, so you brought on the rain dance. I know, right. terrible. Well, I'll blame you. You've said that globally now. You do realise that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to talk to you a little bit about, about both your businesses, really. First of all, the Aaron Calvert Entertainment. Uh, you were yeah. doing some brilliant stuff with the Vanishing Cabaret over in Manchester. Uh, I'm guessing that's either finished or put on hold or postponed for now. Uh, yeah. Events, I'm guessing you've been massively affected on the event side. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Actually, when this was all happening, I was I was really, really lucky. And I'm honestly thankful that I was in this situation. But I got married on the 6th of March this year. Um, and, you know, I had weddings booked in for the rest of the year that have now all had to postpone, you know, my own best man and my business partner, Sam, uh, he had to postpone his wedding. He was supposed to be in May. Uh, my wife's brother was getting married in April. They postponed and not even got a date yet for, for when they'll have uh, the wedding again. And so, you know, it's thrown in all of these sort of spanners. So, you know, I'm really thankful that I managed to, to get my wedding in when I did. Uh, went away on honeymoon. The honeymoon got caught, cut short, but, you know, granted, I got away for a week, so I'm definitely not complaining. But we came back to lockdown. Uh, my wife's self-employed as well. She, she owns a salon in Worley. Uh, called Elizabeth Grace Hair, and so we were closing the salon at the same time as trying to protect her staff. Yep. And I was getting emails saying, "Oh, we've got to cancel events, we've got to postpone." And and to be honest, you know, at first everyone was postponing till September, August, so on, so forth. And yeah, that that has now, as months have gone on, all of my work this year on the entertainment side has completely vanished, which is yeah. terrifying. Um, I mean, it is a vanishing cabaret, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we, we genuinely had a full sold out show in April, a full sold out show in May, ready to go ahead. Those have been postponed, but with the government not giving any sort of direction on entertainment, we don't know when to. So we're no. obviously the stress of trying to manage that and, and keep people informed. Um, and, and yeah, so my calendar pretty much overnight vanished for 2020. Yep. Um, I know you'll walk back into that and I know it'll be brilliant when you do get back into it and those seats will fill really quickly because you're just amazing at what you do. But on the other side, and this is where you are really fortunate because you had prescription hypnosis. Absolutely. Uh, and that is going to be a massive benefit for lots of reasons. One, um, it's helped you to keep going through lockdown and you've had another business to focus on and put your attention to. Uh, yeah. two, you get to do what you love and what you're good at every day, which is brilliant. But three, actually, what you provide in that is not only helpful to people in general anyway, but because of this pandemic, that's going to be in demand and in need. I mean, what are you doing to uh, get on the mental health agenda at the minute from that side? So uh, sort of mid pandemic, I guess, at this point, so that was like early May. Um, I actually released a series of seven videos that were that were free to everyone. It was basically a mission to help people bust stress in lockdown. So they're still online, and yes, lockdown and things have has kind of changed a little bit now, but they're still relevant. There's lots of good stress busting tips. Lots of um, in there as well, haven't you, for younger people? Yes, yeah, yeah. So looking at the stress of, of children as well, I think that's sometimes something we over um, sort of overlook because our kids are so good at appearing fine until something happens whereas humans uh, i say humans like kids aren't humans um but the uh, but adults obviously we kind of we sort of slowly degrade and slowly get more sluggish and tired and so on and so forth whereas kids don't know so they just go and go and go and then slowly drop off a cliff so it's important yeah. that we're looking we out we expect them to be resilient don't we because they crack on with everything else we expect them to be resilient and, yeah. and love the fact that they don't have to go to school but suddenly they've got to try and do online lessons I've yeah. got a 16 year old that's just finished school uh, she's had a prom cancelled a 16th cancelled all the GCSEs are now guesstimated this year doesn't know when she can start college she's in complete limbo and you can't yeah. overlook that because it does impact them um, absolutely. absolutely you know many of them haven't seen their friends for for months and months and months you know 
luckily that bubble sort of coming so we can at least team up with a couple of families to, yeah. uh, to, to, to for, for kids to hang out but it, you know it, it, it's, it's massively tough on them it's definitely had an effect so yeah they're, they're on the prescription hypnosis website on the beach stress you can go and watch these seven days of stress busting activities and from that obviously people have sort of got in touch because they need more help so anxiety is skyrocketed uh, and that's something definitely can help with stress has skyrocketed obviously yeah. um you know people's sort of priorities have changed and actually it's given people a time to kind of reflect on maybe things that they've put off doing like they want to finally give up smoking or they want to uh, lose some weight or actually they just need more confidence as a as a business person to go out and talk to businesses because they're a bit shy right. uh, and so that side of things on the individual level has definitely taken off yeah. and then we can i interrupt you a second there? are you able to deliver some of this via zoom via online meetings yeah so through through kind of the first couple of months it was all sort of online so uh, the cut so it breaks down into two bits obviously after an inquiry we have a little chat and then there's a consultation which normally takes an hour that's always done over zoom now yeah. um Ideally, obviously, it'd be in person, but with, with sort of safety in mind uh, through Zoom. And then uh, the second half, which is the actual session, which is about an hour and a half, that was being done over on Zoom until the 15th of June. And then since the 15th of June, uh, we're using a socially distant um, sort, of, uh, sort of space. Yeah, there we go. There, there we go. Space. I mean, luckily, it, it, you know, I'm just using my voice. So there's no touching or anything like that. There's no like shaking the hand and hypnotizing them or anything like that. So, yeah. you know, as long as they're sat down nice and comfortable uh, on, on the couch, which they are, uh, then I'm able to, to sort of deliver that service still, which has been great. Brilliant. Um, I'm guessing Aaron, to relax them to that point, are we getting people into sort of alpha brain states here and, and bringing them up to where you can get into that subconscious? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, hypnosis is kind of misunderstood in a way. And I think uh, particularly with like alpha brainwaves and things like that, it seems very mystical and very um, um, sort of people don't really understand it. But the easiest way of looking at it is it's a state of concentration. And the way we're going to get to that state of concentration, which is incredibly heightened mm. so that you're taking on board suggestions and it feels real. So that, you know, if, if I ask you now, Lisa, to imagine you're cold, you probably go, I'm cold. I'm going to not the of it. <laughs> Um, but if I if I put you under hypnosis in that intense state, state of concentration and then give you the suggestion you're cold, you'll actually start to feel it. You'll start to shiver. You'll start to get a, 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 a pyloerector response on your arms and get uh, goosebumps. You'll actually physiologically feel cold. And that's the difference. And to get to that state, there are two ways. Firstly, is overload of the nervous system. So that's where you confuse the nervous system and your brain takes the command to release it, which is sleep. Um, and that would be something I do on stage where I do like a high five and put them to sleep. And, uh, and you've seen that, uh, which looks very dramatic, obviously not really used for therapy. Um, but in therapy, we're using relaxation. So it's more like a guided relaxation, meditation or yoga session. But you find yourself just sinking off and inside kind of your own mind, mm -hmm. uh, like your body's kind of switched off and everything becomes real. So if I ask you to imagine a, a state where you are incredibly calm, and confident you will feel that beginning to surge through you and it's funny because just the suggestion of that starts to make you think of a nice place that you've been calm i had the sun the sea the sand for a split second there Aaron. i mean you are very good at what you do <laughs> people you put under on lancashire day i don't think you had to touch really or, or do very much with them i mean now you've got them under within seconds just blew my mind and everybody else's and probably will do for a long time to come um i'm interested Aaron, before we slowly wrap this up to just understand the people that are coming through on prescription hypnosis yeah is it more of people wanting to better themselves in terms of health smoking and things like that or are you already feeling the anxiety? I spoke to somebody the other day who'd actually suffered from PTSD. And I went through a conversation with her about, you know, how did you recognize it? And actually, it, it wasn't the mental symptoms. It was the physical symptoms. Started to get migraine, started to shake when she was eating, just didn't understand why. She was suffering all of this stress to PTSD level without even realizing it. Um, yeah. And then had to be diagnosed later and now can manage it well. But it, it's amazing how we, how the body tries to just convince itself we're fine, carry on. How do people recognize that? And, and what type of customers are coming through at the minute? 
Yeah, so I think with the kind of sort of recognition of symptoms of, you know, stress and mental health, we're very good at kind of passing things off. Oh, I'm just a bit tired. Oh, I didn't get enough sleep last night. Oh, I'm just a bit stressed, which is a blase word that doesn't really mean anything to us. Mm-hmm. It's just something we say to pacify ourselves. You know, there are very physical symptoms. So headaches and migraines are some of them. Tension literally in the shoulders is a, an early sign of stress. Okay. Uh, forgetting little things as well. Uh, being more tired than you should be if you've had a full night's sleep and yet you're still tired, you know, that is a, that is a symptom that you're, you're stressed out. Then you get the physiological ones, an increased heart rate, um, increased respiratory rate. There's more, so when you're breathing quicker, which, which is more associated with anxiety and sort of leading towards a, more of a panic attack than stress. Um, but, you know, inside the effect it's having we can't see is it increases your blood pressure, which increases the risk of um, heart problems and strokes and things like that. So it's having a massive effect. So, you know, if you start to feel like you're not yourself, that you aren't full of energy as you normally are, then that probably means on some level you're stressed. Uh, And the first thing to do is understand what that is. So, you know, with the seven day videos, what I was doing, first of all, was educating people on the symptoms, what to look for, uh, what is stress, what effect does it have on you? Because once you understand those things, you're more alert to it. You're aware of it. So you can start to understand it. Same with anxiety. What are the symptoms of anxiety? Like, you know, why are you feeling that sort of tightness in your chest and you're not sure what it is? Like, you know, it's a generalized anxiety. How can we then control that once you understand what it is? So there's lots of tips to help help that. So I think customers coming through, let's say customers, that's kind of the wrong word. That's more the entertainment side, but you know, um, clients, people, just generally people getting in touch and you know, I'm always there for help and advice. If, if, if hypnotherapy isn't for you, I'll point you in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, but you know, the people that are coming through are kind of 50, 50 on the, on the want to make a positive change, like genuinely want to, they feel okay. They've got time to slow down and look at their life and figure out what they want to change about themselves. So like I said, weight loss, smoking, uh, maybe they want to help with uh, sort of anger management and things like that. And then the other 50% is that anxiety of going back to normal. Um, and I think that's sort of the company side of things, sort of the business side of things that I'm driving at the moment is that return to work. You know, you've got a workforce now that have been off for three months that are out of the habit that are coming back into work with probably stress because they've been uncertain about work, they've been at home, they're anxious about the virus, they're coming into a landscape that's probably very changed and they're not able to market or work in the same way as they once were. All of those things begin to stress people out. And as soon as you come off the back of this, which has had a massive impact on our mental health, you're putting people on shaky ground going forwards when they come back to work. And so the drive I'm on at the moment is making sure that employers are looking after staff and putting everything they can in place. Not, you know, and this is no fault. Mental health is genuinely becoming sort of more top of more people's priority list. But unless it's the top of everyone's priority list, then, you know, there's, there's still a lot of work to do. Um, it costs people individually a lot in their lives, but it also costs businesses like billions of pounds a year in days off in, in help and support. But if we prevent that, rather than cure it, we're in a much better position. So I'm massively driving for people to look after their staff, give them the tools and techniques that they use to help manage their stress, manage their mental health, manage their mood, uh, so that they transition back to work a lot more effectively. And obviously they're back at 100%, like in in, in no time and maintaining that for the future as well. It's not just about coming back to the pandemic. It's about giving staff the tools that they can use going forward. So when unexpected things happen in their life, they can deal with that stress and stay efficient at work. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I think we're sort of 50, 50 here, aren't we on um, um, people coming back. You've got some people that have handled it really well. They're coming back very positively. And I, I think the pandemic has as its good sides. It, it has given people that opportunity to sit back, look at life and think, how did I get so lost in it before? And how do I fit a job yeah. in and things like that? And actually these are the things I want to change about myself. And then there'll be half of the people that actually is impacted in a negative way. And those negatives sadly do impact our health on a bigger level than just mentally. Um, You know, the body has that chemical reaction where it starts to impact all our other organs as well. So I think for me, it's always been a case of work-life balance with family and appreciating why I work so hard and what I do it for ultimately. Um, And secondly, just kind of being a bit more present and in touch with myself. You know, I do a little bit of meditating, a bit of reading. Um, And that keeps me balanced. And, And yes, I mean, my life is... Uh, a million miles an hour most days it's uh, it never sits still no two days are the same um but i guess what uh, what happened with me Aaron, is about 20 years ago my my father passed away um he died in my arms i was eight months pregnant it was quite a traumatic experience yeah. um but what i took from it rather than the sorrow was 
how precious life is and how short it is and how little opportunity we get. So I actually choose to have my life at a million miles an hour so I can fill it and not have any regrets when my time's up. But yeah. unconsciously choosing that, I'm not under stress. Um, I'm choosing to go out and do everything that I love to do. So that puts me in a positive place with that busyness rather than a, a negative place with it. Um, I know people are going to be in touch with you. I'm delighted that you've joined us for this week's Business Bites. It's always a pleasure to chat to you. Even better to watch you in action. So do let us know when those shows reopen and we'll get some tickets and come on down. Absolutely. Um, companies and individuals, anybody can find you on Lancashire, both as Aaron Calvert and ha as Prescription Hypnosis. Um, and you're pretty much available for anyone, whether it's a young person, whether it's an individual, man, woman, it really doesn't matter. But of course, for businesses as well, they can access you to go in, talk to teams, put some de-stressing uh, uh, programs in place. And of course, those seven videos, uh, you know, I've watched a few of them, I'll admit I've not watched them all, but absolutely, they're worth the watch. Um, and so I would encourage anybody that's watching this to get on your website and have a look at those as well. Um, Aaron Calvert, it has been an absolute pleasure, sir. Have it's been a pleasure as always speaking to you, Lisa. Great fun. Fabulous week. And uh, we'll catch up again soon. Take care. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Aaron.